In this video, we're going to discuss the inherent challenges in cloud security and why we often need a zero trust approach to security to go out deal with the challenges that exist much more in cloud computing than we had in the traditional data center. So what I'm gonna do first is talk about the challenges in cloud security. And then after that, I'm gonna talk about why that actually demands a zero trust architecture in many cases, not all cases, but in many cases. So I'm gonna begin with the biggest weakness in cloud computing. And then after that, I'll tell you the other things, what we do need to also bet against and plan against. So the biggest challenge in cloud computing is the lack of a hard perimeter like we have in a data center. So let me kind of walk you through traditional access in a private data center, and I'll compare that to the cloud and you'll see an immediate weakness. In a private data center, all of our systems sit here with private IP addresses and they're all behind a firewall, which means that as a rule, Nothing can come past the firewall from the outside. And realistically speaking, we're going to have multiple layers of firewalls, which would make it incredibly challenging to pass the firewall and come in. But note, if we have uh, things that need to be reachable by the internet, we create a demilitarized zone off of the firewall. So what would happen here, for example, is let's say we had a web server on this DMZ. What we would do is we with the firewall would allow uh, say TCP port 443 traffic into that web server. And that would be the only thing that would be allowed to that web server. But at the same time, all of our things back here have private IP addresses and they're not reachable from the internet and they're behind a firewall. Now let's look at the public cloud. Now in the public cloud, we don't necessarily have the ability to create that hardcore boundary what we have. So what we typically do is we have a the internet, which is connected to our VPC potentially, and with maybe an internet gateway or some type of event router, or it's just native there. So the internet is connected to our VPC. We've got a public subnet in that VPC, which means we actually have to allow into our private virtual private cloud, virtual private data center, internet traffic which we didn't have to do here. And now we've allowed public internet traffic to this public subnet, and it's a lot easier to go from this public subnet than a private subnet, even though there's ACLs and a few things we can do here. It's a lot easier to execute this hack than it is to be able to execute a hack from the internet in this environment because of the softer perimeters. So that doesn't mean we can't secure it well in cloud computing, we can. Potentially we could use two VPCs and internet facing VPC and then a private VPC, that would be one way we can do it. Zero trust will also help us get there, but that's the driving force behind uh, cloud security challenges is that soft perimeter. Now it's not just the soft perimeters in cloud computing, there's a, a few other risks that we have to mitigate. So one of them is loss of control. We have no control over how the cloud provider runs their systems, their actual network, their firewalls, their internet connection, their, their, their private clouds that, or their public cloud software, the control plane that's running it. Which means uh, if that gets hacked or if that gets broken down, we could potentially be affected as well. So we have no control. And when you have no control, you can't guarantee certain things. Now on the cloud, the realistically speaking is a bigger attack service than in the data center. In the data center, people would only want to attack you and get your information, hack the public cloud provider, and you might get everybody's stuff. So it's a much higher value target. Plus the cloud provider has all these externally and many uh, APIs and things that are, that are exposed, management consoles, meaning the control plane, so many third party integrations. So it can get fairly complicated as we're dealing with clouds or multiple cloud providers. It's just a lot of touch points. So, it's much harder to do that than it was in the data center, which is okay. We just have, may have to use a different approach. Now in our data center, we can see every piece of traffic going over the network if we want everything. In the cloud, we lose a lot of that visibility into what's going on inside of our network and going on there. Now in our data center, we're responsible for it all. We own it all. And I'm gonna go back to that shared responsibility, the model, model of the cloud. You're in control of your stuff and they're in control of their stuff. If they make a mistake, you've got a problem. Whereas in, in the normal environment, if you make a mistake, you've got a problem. Now, the cloud providers are excellent at what they do. Just we have to understand the risks if we're going to understand how to protect them. And that's why we're discussing these. And realistically speaking, each cloud provider may have inconsistent uh, policies. Uh, they have different tools. So it gets fairly complex uh, to try to manage these environments. Uh, 
across multiple clouds. And of course, the cloud is kind of ephemeral in its infrastructure. Stuff goes up, stuff goes down, and that's one of the benefits of the cloud, which is a wonderful thing. But now that you understand that, let's talk about why we really need uh, zero trust. Because we lost that perimeter and almost all the security that we talked about, we have to assume that we're hacked at all times. So if we work under the assumption of a zero trust security model or a zero trust architecture, we assume that we're breached at all times. And that way we have to create a strategy to make sure that if, even if we were breached, no one could actually understand the traffic. And that'll take things like micro segmentation. It'll take things like encryption, uh, what have you. So if we lost the perimeter, now identity becomes the new perimeter. So anytime someone wants to sign on, or get access to the network, we need to determine if they should be allowed on. Now here we're gonna use much more sophisticated means of identity verification than say a username and password. We might be looking for multi-factor authentication. We may be doing some form of context aware I am, and I, normally in zero trust we would be. So we can really determine who's accessing, are they, are they who they're supposed to be, what they're allowed to do, kids keep track of it. And also if things don't feel right, because maybe Mike is not uh, accessing it from Florida, but maybe I'm accessing it from my family home in Greece, ask me the challenge, are, are you in, in Greece? Uh, give me an extra challenge before I log in because I'm probably not in Greece, I'm probably in Florida. Now, another thing that's part of the zero trust architecture is if we assume we're breached, we have to constantly verify everything. So that means one router wants to talk to another router, verify it. One host wants to talk to the network, verify it. So the server needs to talk to another server, verify it. And in that manner, because we lost all these other things, at least we know that we have to verify everything. So it's going to be a lot harder for a hacker to gain access to our systems. So this concept of continuous evaluation of trust, making sure the devices are who they claim to be is constantly going on. Now, if we're gonna work in this environment, we wanna micro segment as much as we can, ACLs, firewalls, any kind of micro segmentation we can do. If we're doing this in a private cloud, we've got much greater micro segmentation. We've got VLANs, we've got private VLANs, we've got all kinds of things we can do on the private cloud, which we may not be able to do in the public cloud, but micro segmentation we can do in some way, shape or form everywhere. That could be having 500 VPCs, for example, and segmenting your things via VPCs. There's other ways you could do things, but micro segmentation is part of it. Now, of course, if identity is everything and we no longer have all these hardcore perimeters, now we definitely need to enforce least privilege access. Truth be told, we've always enforced it, but it becomes even more important here. So this means constantly making sure people have the rights that they need to do their job and no more. And uh, being much more meticulous about auditing these things and making sure that uh, there's no privilege creep. So that's another reason why you know, th this approach, when we lack these parameters, requires these kind of zero trust principles. Now, end to end encryption, because we assume breach at all times, if what you're getting is encrypted gibberish, you can't use it for anything, right? So everything will be encrypted. And let's talk about why we're using encrypted. If you've got two ends, uh, part of encryption will make sure that each end can verify who they are. Encryption will make sure that the messages hasn't have not changed between the ends through some form of hashing integrity check mechanism. And that way we can guarantee that messages are sent or not. So we typically use encry encryption for these reasons. And it will prove uh, that the devices are who they claim to be. No one can get access to the message. Uh, no one can claim they didn't send a message, that kind of non-repudiation thing as well. And of course, in an environment where we assume breach, we're going to have to have systems monitoring our systems. So we're gonna have seam and source systems to be correlating logs and automating responses. We're typically going to have to have some form of context aware IAM that's gonna uh, be adaptive in nature. We're typically going to have some next generation firewalls that usually have some AI to not only do what they're told by, by policy, but also be able to detect anomalies and potentially stop them in real time. So realistically speaking, the cloud is wonderful, but we lose physical control. We lose those hard parameters. There's a greater attack service. They're a higher value target than the traditional company. And given that most organizations have three or four clouds, it gets even more complicated in the multi-cloud environment. So those are the kinds of reasons that we have challenges in cloud security. Doesn't mean the cloud can't be secure. It doesn't mean the cloud's not great. It's just we have to be understanding the weaknesses in any system so we know how to protect them. And by coming in with that zero trust approach that we assume we're breached, we're gonna evaluate everything, we're gonna encrypt everything, we're gonna micro segment it so people can't see other people's things. 
we're going to constantly monitor everything. It takes a, gives us an ability to work around those weaknesses and help mitigate them and protect our organizations from harm. Now, if you would like to become a cloud architect or a security architect or an AI architect or an enterprise architect, we run an architecture webinar every week, actually twice per week usually, where we'll go over the various architecture roles, the skills you'll need for those roles, and how to get hired for them. And we do this completely free uh, twice a week. These meetings will be on Zoom, so you can ask any questions you like, and we'll do anything we can to help you in your career. You can register for these free webinars in the description of this video. Now, while you're in the description of this video, uh, we have many free guides to assist you in your architecture career, guides on how to become an AI architect, guides on how to become a cloud architect, uh, guides on how to become, say, an enterprise architect, guides on how to win the interview. So go check them out. Uh, go sign up for some. They'll be emailed to you, and they're completely free. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your IT architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you in another video real soon.